Heavenly Reward, Are You Ready for the Judgment Seat of Christ as a Raptured Saint? Heavenly Reward, Are You Ready for the Judgment Seat of Christ as a Raptured Saint? Resurrection and Rapture Day Heavenly Day of Commendation and Reward after Glorious Rapture, the Bema or Judgment Seat of Christ in Heaven What is your expectation as a raptured saint? Many born-again Christians are getting ready for the imminent glorious rapture but they are not aware that they will give account of their service for Lord Jesus Christ while on earth. The essence of this inspiring evangelical post is to prepare you for what to expect at the heavenly bema or judgment seat of Christ after the imminent glorious rapture. All dedicated rapture watchers will get the crown of Righteousness from Lord Jesus Christ because they are perpetually ready for His glorious appearance in the sky. Since they are dedicated rapture watchers, the crown of righteousness will be the reward for perpetual watchfulness at the judgment seat of Christ in heaven after the imminent glorious rapture. There is a crown of righteousness that Lord Jesus Christ will place on the heads of all dedicated rapture. Watchers because they eagerly love, watch, and await his glorious appearance in the sky, 2 Timothy 4 7. 8. Rewarded Saint. There will also be awarded the crown of rejoicing for active soul winners for Lord Jesus Christ, 1. Thessalonians 2 19 20. There will also be an incorruptible crown for overcoming the old nature, 1. Corinthians 9 25 27. There will also be a crown of life for enduring persecution and trials while on earth. James 1:12, Revelation 2:10. Additionally, there will be a crown of glory for shepherding the flock of Christ, 1 Peter 5:4. The crown of glory is a special crown that will be awarded by Lord Jesus Christ to dedicated men/women of God who share or teaches the word of God, Holy Bible, regularly with People in the churches and everywhere both online slash offline. They could be evangelists, ministers, pastors, deacons, Sunday school teachers, child evangelism teachers or anyone who teaches the word of God faithfully to others. Such individuals will be adequately rewarded by Lord Jesus Christ for their dedication and commitment to sharing the eternal gospel of Lord Jesus Christ and encouraging the faith of other believers in Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is the Word of God, John 1,1-5. By God's grace, you will be entitled to any of these glorious crowns in heaven as a raptured saint at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ after the imminent glorious rapture. Crowns Heavenly Crown Romans 14,10-12 says, For we will all stand before God's judgment seat, so then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. 2 Corinthians 5.10 tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. In the context, it is clear that both scriptures are referring to born again. Christians, not unbelievers. The judgment seat of Christ, therefore, involves born-again believers giving an account of their lives to Lord Jesus Christ. The judgment seat of Christ does not determine salvation. That was determined by Christ's sacrifice on our behalf, 1 John 2, 2 and our faith in Him, John 3:16. All of our sins are forgiven and we will never be condemned for them, Romans 8, 1. We should not look at it. The judgment seat of Christ is God judging our sins, but rather as Lord Jesus Christ rewarding us for our lives. Yes, as the Bible says, we will have to give an account of ourselves. This is going to be the primary focus of the judgment seat of Christ. Indeed, a backslidden preacher or backslidden Christian can end up in hell after death, 2 Peter 2 1-22. Also, a cold or lukewarm Christian can be left behind by Lord Jesus Christ on imminent glorious rapture. Day, Revelation 3,14-22 Therefore, as born-again Christians, we must repent always from any known or hidden sins, 
be committed to soul winning and be ready always for imminent glorious rapture. We can't make heaven by personal efforts or self-righteousness. We can only make heaven by the great mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's Word is the Bible. At the judgment seat of Christ, born-again believers are rewarded based on how faithfully they served. Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 9 4-27 2 Timothy 2 5. Some of the things we might be judged on are how well we obeyed the Great Commission, Matthew 28 18 20, how victorious we were over sin, Romans 6 1 4, and how well we controlled our tongues, James 3 1 9. The Bible speaks of born again believers receiving crowns for different things based on how faithfully they served Lord Jesus Christ, 1. Corinthians 9,4-27, 2 Timothy 2,5 The various crowns are described in 2 Timothy 2,5, 2 Timothy 4,8, James 1,12, 1 Peter 5,4, and Revelation 2,10. James 1,12 is a good summary of how we should think. About the judgment seat of Christ, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. After the imminent glorious rapture, Lord Jesus Christ will summon all the raptured saints in heaven to his judgment seat for decoration. Meanwhile, each raptured saint will already be wearing a shining garment, Revelation 19,8. The heavenly garment will be made of linen, white, and clean. Glorious Rapture Day The Raptured Saints before decorations can commence individually, something will happen. What is it? The works of all. Raptured saints will be tested. One by one, we will be summoned and an angel will bring a very huge package containing all the works that we have done from the day we were born again till the day Lord. Jesus Christ returns. Everything we did before we were born again are already forgotten, the blood of. Lord Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins, 1 John 1 colon 7. When the angel brings the package, there will be already a divine fire of assessment burning and that package will be thrown into the fire which will continue to burn. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work, of what sort it is. If any one's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If any one's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so is through fire. 1. Corinthians 3,11-15 If what is in your package is hay, stubble, grass, or wood, you will watch as the big package begins to get smaller and smaller until there is nothing left. If what is in your package is gold, silver, diamonds, things that cannot be destroyed by fire, the fire will just burn the coverings and your package will remain solid. This day in heaven will be a day of great expectation because you will watch in trepidation as your works are being tested by fire. On that day, you will see the works of some people big-time evangelists, ministers, prophets, archbishops, bishops, pastors, people you perceive as mighty men slash women of God. In your presence their packages would be reduced to ashes. Therefore, when an angel is bringing your own package, you will begin to sweat and your heart will be beating very fast because you do not know what is going to happen. Heavenly rewards will follow after the divine fire of assessment has done the analytical task of consuming all that is consumable. According to 2 Corinthians 5:10, rewards will be based on what you achieved for Lord Jesus Christ while on earth. Also, what you would have achieved will also be taken into consideration as well as what you ignored or neglected. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. 
James 4:17. Additionally, what will be taken into consideration will be all the words that you have spoken from the day you were born again till imminent rapture day. This entails all words that you spoke for Lord Jesus Christ, to testify about Him, to glorify Him, to worship Him, all will be taken into account. After everything has been taken into consideration at the judgment seat of Christ, there will be two categories of heavenly saints. The first category will be saints who will go forward to receive their decoration from Lord Jesus Christ while the second category will be saints whose works are completely consumed by divine fire of assessment. They will go back to their seats decorated with shame. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. 1 John 2:28. Imagine that on that day, you see some people getting four or five crowns, with numerous sparkling gems on their crowns and you have nothing, everything all burnt, how shameful it will be. However, no problem, after all you are already in heaven. On that day, some undecorated saints will see some of their fellow brothers or sisters in Christ coming and they will turn their backs because decorated saints will be so glorious with all their sparkling gems, compared with the emptiness of the undecorated saints. However, in heaven, you will not be envious. A major reason that will make so many works burn is the motive behind the works we are doing for Lord Jesus Christ. Some people give to the gospel because they want to be seen. You can be certain that everything you give so that you can be seen is going to be burnt on that day. Some people work for Lord Jesus Christ because they want to be known. However, any work done with that kind of motive is going to be burnt. Your motive for working very hard and trying to win many souls for Lord Jesus Christ must be because you love him. That is the best and acceptable motive. You must not give offering, tithes or evangelical support because you want a reward. The reward will come, certainly. However, give offering, tithes or evangelical support because you love Lord Jesus Christ. Do things because you love Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ must be your love. Your life will change if Lord Jesus Christ is your love. Therefore, a lot of things you are doing for Lord Jesus Christ presently must be done simply because of your love for Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer. Glorious Crown If you end up in heaven without a single soul being one for Lord Jesus Christ, your crown of righteousness will be on your head, but there will not be a single gem on it. Some saints will get Sparkling gems in their crowns in form of decoration. The number of souls you won for Lord Jesus Christ. While on earth will determine the number of magnificent gems on your crowns. Crowns in heaven. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to. Righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12, 3. If you win one soul for Lord Jesus Christ. While on earth then you will have one gem on your crown. The crowns of some people will be full of many gems because for every soul won for Lord Jesus Christ, there will be a gem for the soul winner. It is not the souls that you win for Lord Jesus Christ that will determine the gems on your crown, but the souls that you win that end up in heaven. If you win souls and they backslide before Lord Jesus Christ comes, you will suffer a loss. Therefore you must do something more concrete about your follow-up. Apart from winning souls, you must also make sure that your fruits remain because they are those to be rewarded. Your crown will have many gems in Jesus' name. Pearl Crown The saints rewarded on that day will walk boldly forward, smiling and rejoicing, fully decorated. However, no matter the number of gems in your crown, you will discover that you have not done enough. Lord Jesus Christ will show you those things you have done and also those things you ought to have done. Therefore, when you see the reward for the little you have done and you imagine the reward that could have been yours, 
if you had done what Lord Jesus Christ expected you to do, you will feel apologetic when you stand before Lord Jesus Christ on that day. There are five heavenly crowns mentioned in the New Testament that will be awarded to believers. They are the imperishable crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, and the crown of life. The Greek word translated crown is Stephanos, the source for the name. Stephen the martyr, and means a badge of royalty, a prize in the public games or a symbol of honor. Generally used during the ancient Greek games, it referred to a wreath or garland of leaves placed on a victor's head as a reward for winning an athletic contest. As such, this word is used figuratively in the New Testament of the rewards of heaven God promises those who are faithful. Paul's passage in 1 Corinthians 9,24-25 best defines for us how these crowns are awarded. The Overcomer Christian in a Race 1. The Imperishable Crown 1 Corinthians 9,24-25 Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, for an imperishable crown, all things on this earth are subject to decay and will perish. Lord Jesus Christ urges us to not store our treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Matthew 6:19. This is analogous to what Paul was saying about that wreath of leaves that was soon to turn brittle and fall apart. But not so the heavenly crown, faithful endurance wins a heavenly reward which is an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1 colon 3-5 2. The crown of rejoicing, 1 Thessalonians 2 19, for what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4 4 to rejoice always in the Lord for all the bountiful blessings our gracious God has showered upon us. As Christians we have more in this life to rejoice about than anyone else. Luke tells us there is rejoicing even now in heaven, Luke 15 7. Crown of rejoicing is a heavenly reward for active soul winners. The crown of rejoicing will be our reward where God will wipe away every tear there. Shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 21 colon 4 3. The crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4 colon 8, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing. We inherit this crown through the righteousness of Christ, which is what gives us a right to it, and without which it cannot be obtained. Because it is obtained and possessed in a righteous way, and not by force and deceit as earthly crowns sometimes are, it is an everlasting crown, promised to all who love the Lord Jesus Christ and eagerly wait for his return in the sky, imminent glorious rapture. Through our enduring the discouragements, persecutions, sufferings, or even death, we know assuredly our reward is with Lord Jesus Christ in eternity, Philippians 3.20. This crown is not for those who depend upon their own sense of righteousness or of their own works. Such an attitude breeds only arrogance and pride, not a longing, a fervent desire to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. 4. The Crown of Glory, 1 Peter 5 4, And when the Chief Shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. The Crown of Glory is a heavenly reward for shepherding the flock of Christ. The Crown of Glory belongs to those who lead others in the way of God. For example, church, elders, evangelists, ministers, bishops, pastors, Sunday school teachers, child evangelism teachers, or 
anyone who teaches the Word of God faithfully to others online or offline. Such individuals will be rewarded by Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Apostle Peter is addressing the elders. This word glory is an interesting word referring to the very nature of God and His actions. It entails His great splendor and brightness. Recall Stephen who, while being stoned to death, was able to look into heaven and see the glory of God, Acts 7,55-56. This word also means that the praise and honor we bestow to God alone is do him because of who he is, Isaiah 42,8, 48,11, Galatians 1,5. It also recognizes that believers are incredibly blessed to enter into the kingdom, into the very likeness of Christ himself. For as Paul so eloquently put it, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8:18. 5. The Crown of Life, Revelation 2.10, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. This crown is for all believers, but is especially dear to those who endure sufferings, who bravely confront persecution for Lord Jesus Christ, even to the point of death. In scripture the word life is often used to show a relationship that is right with God. It was Lord Jesus Christ who said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly, John 10:10. 10, 10. Just as things such as air, food, and water are vital for our physical lives, Lord Jesus Christ provides us what is required for our spiritual lives. He is the one who provides living water. He is the bread of life, John 4:10, 6:35. We know that our earthly lives will end. But we have the amazing promise that comes only to those who come to God through Lord Jesus Christ, and this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life, 1 John 2:25. James tells us that this crown of life is for all those who love God, James 1:12. The question then is how do we demonstrate our love for God? The Apostle John answers this for us, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. 1 John 5, 3 As his children we must keep his commandments, obeying him, always remaining faithful. So, as we endure the inevitable trials, pains, heartaches, and tribulations as long as we live may we ever move forward, always looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2, and receive the crown of life that awaits us. The judgment seat of Christ precedes his coming to earth to set up his millennial kingdom. Its purpose is to reward his faithful servants. You will serve Lord Jesus Christ during the millennial period in direct proportion to the way you have faithfully served him during this time on earth. If you have been a spectator Christian in this life, you will be one in the millennial kingdom. Your reward earned at the judgment seat of Christ will determine your opportunity to serve Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years. Remember, as a raptured saint, you will be an immortal being forever. It is entirely up to you to decide now before imminent glorious rapture day what your condition will be in the millennial kingdom. Don't live such a self-centered, unsurrendered life that you have no special crown or any reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Presently, we are in a race along one. Some Christians make good sprinters and serve the Lord Jesus Christ well for a few years, but it is a wise Servant who always keeps his slash her body under discipline, lives a holy life continuously, wins as many people to Christ as he slash her can, endures persecution or trial when necessary and teaches the word of God regularly to others. Such a Christian will not regret this kind of life at the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ will be an exciting experience of the faithful child of God but it will be a 
miserable judgment of loss for those who love the world and the things of this world so much that they never get around to serving the Lord Jesus Christ, who paid a great price to save them. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so is through fire. 1 Corinthians 3 14 15. After imminent glorious rapture, at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ, raptured believers whose faithful service provides them with genuine rewards that survive the fire test will receive many crowns. From Lord Jesus Christ. Since the Bible tells us that we will reign with Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 2 12. When he comes to reign in his millennial kingdom, it is obvious what these crowns signify, for crowns are for rulers. That is compatible with his, Lord Jesus Christ, parable of the pounds, in which he promised to give rewards according to service by saying, I will make you ruler over ten cities. Luke 19 11-27, that may be the reason the heavenly judgment seat of Christ will occur before the millennial. Kingdom so that glorified saints can be assigned to opportunities of service according to the faithful use of their talents in directly advancing Christ's spiritual kingdom in this present life. According to 1 Corinthians 3 12 13, some of our heavenly treasures, good works, will be gold, silver, or precious jewels, meaning that they will survive the fire test and the believer will receive a reward. What you should also see in this passage is that the wood, hay, and stubble, bad works, do not survive. The fire test and the believer suffers loss of reward not loss of salvation. The reason bad works don't qualify to abide the fire test and earn a reward is because they have not been done with the right motive. To the eyes of people, they may look like silver, gold and precious stones, but in reality before. Lord Jesus Christ, they are nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. The reality of the fire test will reveal what sort it is, whether good or bad. The judgment seat of Christ will reveal all truth because the works mentioned in 1 Corinthians 3 evidently all looked alike until after the fire tested every man's work what sort it was. There would be no purpose in fire testing straw or wood or stubble unless they looked the same as gold, silver, or jewels. It is the holy test of fire that determines whether the works were really good or bad. To the church, pastor, or fellow Christians, a person's Christian service may look like good works, but his or her evil motive or hidden counsels will be revealed by Lord Jesus Christ at this heavenly judgment seat of Christ, and the believer will lose his or her reward because his or her motive was one of self-seeking or hypocrisy. Therefore, a believer can lose his or her crown, receive less than a full reward, and suffer loss even when expecting rewards. Some of the things that could cause a loss of reward are good things done with an evil motive and hidden counsels of the heart that are displeasing to Lord Jesus Christ. In essence, God's work should be done in God's way with a pure heart and a desire to glorify Lord Jesus Christ, or else there will be no reward, or at least a diminished reward. Lord Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Revelation 19:16. Therefore, as a king or queen, you will reign with the King of Kings, Lord Jesus Christ, throughout the 1,000 years reign of our great King Jesus Christ, Revelation 20:4. During the Millennial Kingdom period, you will also interact with mortal people you are ruling over in any part of the world. The part of the world where you will rule and your responsibilities during the Millennial Kingdom period will be determined by King Jesus Christ. You will report regularly to King Jesus Christ at earthly Jerusalem to brief him about the progress of your administration. Because we are saved by grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, Ephesians 2 8-9, many Christians think there is little or no call on their life presently to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Consequently, 
they accept the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ as a gift and do nothing to advance his kingdom afterward. Unfortunately, they do not. Read on to the following verse, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 By reading this passage, the Lord Jesus Christ expects his children to work for him after they have been given salvation. In fact, we will be rewarded in the Millennial Kingdom period in direct proportion to the way we have served the Lord Jesus Christ presently, Matthew 20,1-16, 25,1430, Luke 19,1-19, and Therefore, we are expected, once saved, to serve our Lord Jesus Christ dedicatedly. Your dedicated service for the Lord Jesus Christ can be anything done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, or for His glory. It could be soul winning, worshipping Him dedicatedly, or even giving a cup of cold water in His name, Matthew 10 40. 42, giving a cup of cold water in His name, Lord Jesus Christ, implies any act of kindness or charitable support rendered to the poor or the needy like the biblical Good Samaritan. Lord Jesus Christ loves a kind, cheerful giver, Philippians 4:19. The Lord Jesus Christ will reward us according to our faithfulness, talent and time spent in serving Him. Selflessly. Talent times our productive sharing of the Gospel, evangelism, times the time we had after. Our salvation to labor for Lord Jesus Christ will equal our eternal reward. The record of our dedicated service is kept by Lord Jesus Christ, who knows what ability we have to serve Him, and will hold us accountable for how we use our talents and time for service. Lord Jesus Christ is a just God and He will treat each believer according to His her works, based on His her ability, Matthew 6 19-21. In the mercy of Lord Jesus Christ, He has not only given us salvation totally free, but He also gives us an opportunity to invest a portion of our treasure, our life, in eternal rewards. The Lord Jesus Christ is not interested in having us serve Him faithfully for just a few years, but rather for our entire lifetime. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15:58. Our reward is in heaven for everything we do on earth for Christ's sake. Our treasure is in heaven. Our continuous labor presently for our Lord Jesus Christ is being recorded always by the holy angels. Our Selfless service for our Lord Jesus Christ will be bountifully rewarded in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 10-12, 2 Corinthians 5:10. You will not take to heaven on imminent glorious rapture. Day anything you have acquired on this sinful earth. You will only ascend to heaven on glorious rapture. Day as a glorious saint in your glorious white garment of righteousness, Revelation 19, 8, 14. Therefore, make sure you utilize your divine calling, time, talents and God-given resources to evangelize zealously. And win many souls for Lord Jesus Christ in this grace period while awaiting the imminent glorious rapture. Don't be a spectator believer. Our eternal treasures and rewards are reserved for us in heavenly new Jerusalem, kept safe for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. As profitable servants of Lord Jesus Christ, we will be bountifully rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ when we get to heaven on imminent glorious rapture day. Don't be an unprofitable servant who will have no eternal rewards in heaven. The holy angels of God are daily recording everything we are doing on earth for the sake of the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ and any help we render for the poor and needy. Henceforth, Everything you are doing for Lord Jesus Christ should be done because you love Him and want to glorify Him. This must always be your motive in your continuous selfless service for our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't serve because you want to get a reward or commendation from people, serve 
dedicatedly because you love Lord Jesus Christ and want to glorify Him. You will get your eternal rewards by God's grace. During the thousand years of the reign of King Jesus Christ, you will serve Him. During that period in direct proportion to the way you have faithfully served Him during this present time on earth. If you have been a spectator Christian in this life, you will be one in the millennial kingdom period. Your eternal rewards earned from your selfless service in this present life will determine your opportunity to serve King Jesus Christ for 1,000 years. In this grace period before imminent glorious rapture, it is entirely up to you to make the right decision now. Wake up from lukewarm, spiritual slumber. Time is running out. Prepare and be ready always for the imminent. Glorious rapture and millennial reign of King Jesus Christ on earth. Apart from soul winning, what else will determine the number of gems on your heavenly crown? The experience of Adelaida de Carrillo will provide an insight to answer the question above. Adelaida, a Bolivian woman was taken by Lord Jesus Christ to both heaven and hell. She was shown what kind of Holiness is required for someone to enter the kingdom of God and what sins are leading churchgoers to hell. According to Adelaida, everything is ready in heaven. Adelaida testified, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I will show you where I told my disciples, that I was going to prepare a place for them, that where I am, there they will be, so that you can tell everyone that all these things are real. The Lord was taking me straight to heaven. Then I saw a very big door open. I said, Lord, hell is horrible but heaven is beautiful. The Lord said, Daughter, I will show you heaven. I saw a place that was like a big city in heaven, it was so big. The Lord showed me a street in heaven that was made of gold, real gold. Revelation 21:21. 21, 21. I saw beautiful flowers along the streets of heaven. No flower on earth can compare to the flowers in heaven. Golden Street in New Jerusalem New Jerusalem Architecture Golden New Jerusalem Heavenly Golden City Pearly Gate of Heaven Heavenly Street of Gold Heavenly New Jerusalem New Jerusalem Beautiful Landscape The Glorious New Jerusalem New Jerusalem Splendor Heavenly River of Life River of Life and Tree of Life The Magnificent New Jerusalem The Lord took me to a place and said, I am going to show you a river, I am going to place you there. I saw a river like glass, it had some shining stones in it. There were also fish and the Lord brought one out of the river in his hand. The fish was happy playing on the palms of the Lord. I said, Lord, put the fish back into the river, it is going to die. The Lord Jesus replied, No one dies here, death doesn't exist. Here, this place is full of life, everything here is life. I said, Lord, there are a lot of people being tormented in hell, why didn't you give them the opportunity to amend their ways and come here to heaven? Jesus replied, they are there as a result of their disobedience. Like a little child, Jesus took me from place to place. That river was so beautiful. Everything waiting for us in heaven is beautiful. I asked, where are the souls you saved? Where are they in heaven? Jesus replied, I will show them to you. The Lord took me to another place and showed me one of my sisters in Christ who died. Her name is Aurora Esperanza. I saw another sister, she was the daughter of one of my sisters, named Grace. She looked so young and beautiful. The Lord said, These are my saints. She has so much peace in heaven, the saints in heaven are just like angels. I saw young saints in heaven, and their clothes were different. That place was full of beautiful flowers a very beautiful place with a sweet smell. The Lord Jesus said, Now I will show you where the garments of my saints are. I asked the Lord, Are you going to show me my own garment? And Jesus said, I will show you the garments of my saints. 
I saw some garments that were white and decorated with gold. The garments have golden belts with names written on them. Jesus said, These are the garments of my saints and these are the garments of some other people that are still in the world, they haven't received me yet. I said, Lord I want to see the crowns, show me the crown of my pastor, and my own crown, Lord I want to see my crown. The Lord said, I will show them to you. The Lord showed me very beautiful crowns. The Lord showed me my crown, it was without stones. It didn't impress me like my pastor's crown. I asked, Why is my crown without stones, like the pastor's? The Lord said, You can't understand all she has gone through to have this kind of crown with plenty of stones on it. Crowns in Heaven An angel is appointed to place stones on the crowns when people repent and come to Jesus Christ. When you win souls to the kingdom of heaven, the angel will put a stone on your crown. When you help the less privileged, the angel will add another stone to your crown. When you help the widow, the angel will add another stone to your crown. When you help the poor and the homeless, the angel will add more stones to your crown. The Lord Jesus Christ was talking to me about my pastor. He said that she has suffered a lot for the kingdom's sake, she had gone through a lot to have that kind of crown. She has so much passion for souls. The Lord Jesus said, tell her to hold tight what she has so that another person won't take her crown. Asterisk Revelation 3 11 plus. I told my pastor all that the Lord told me. Then the Lord Jesus Christ showed me the crowns of all his saints. You can watch the full testimony on YouTube, Adelaida de Carrillo, Holiness Required for Heaven. What will determine your eternal rewards in heaven? The experience of Pastor Park will provide an insight to answer the question above. During a tragic near death experience, a Presbyterian pastor named Park, Yang Jia was taken to heaven and hell by heavenly angels. He was shown why some saints are richly rewarded in heaven, while others have no reward, why some saints have magnificent mansions in heaven, while others live in small community homes. He was shown why, after serving the Lord Jesus Christ his whole life, his house was still small and unfinished. He also witnessed how gruesome hell was, and why so many Christians wound up there, and what sins we must repent of. Pastor Park's testimony is a wake-up call to the church, it will encourage those who are serving Lord Jesus Christ faithfully, it will strengthen your resolve for Lord Jesus Christ and will bring the fear of God to those who are not living holy. Pastor Park testified, the scene of heaven was indescribable. I can't describe heaven with my earthly words. I said, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Even though, I was very prideful and arrogant and cursed with a sickness, you have still brought me to heaven to show me around. I then heard the voice of God, my beloved Pastor Park, Yang Jiu, I welcome you. You have made a long journey here. His voice was overflowing with love and tenderness. I replied back crying in tears, Lord. The angels immediately said, you have been a pastor for twenty years. Do you not know your scriptures? There are no tears in heaven. Please stop it. I was not even able to cry. Revelation 21 4 The Lord Jesus Christ then asked me five questions. How much time did you spend reading the Word, Bible? How much did you give of offerings? How many times have you evangelized to people? Did you tithe properly? How much time did you spend in prayer? I could not answer the fifth question. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuked me for the fifth question. After you had become a mega church pastor, you had become very lazy with prayer. Being busy is no excuse to me. I had to repent of it later. The angels will show you many places in heaven and of hell. Look around as much as you desire. You will leave after witnessing many different places in heaven and hell. 
The angels first took me to three different places in heaven. In the first place, I saw little children living. Together. The second place was where the adults lived. The third place was for the souls that had barely made it to heaven. Even though they made it to heaven, they had made it shamefully. Many people had asked me how old the little children were. They appeared like kindergartens. They were not the little boys or girls as we would know of gender. Each child had their own angel to accompany them. In heaven, most of the souls will have their own individual home. John 14 2 However, there were some who did not have homes. I will explain this later. Moreover, the children did not have their own individual homes either. I asked, the children are also souls, why do they not have their own homes? The angel replied, just as the people on earth require materials to build their homes, we in heaven also need materials to build here. When a person serves the church and others faithfully unto the Lord, those deeds will become materials for a person's home in heaven. When the materials are provided, the angels assigned to build a saint's home will go to work on constructing it. The children who are below the accountability age have not built up any materials to build a home. In other words, they did not have the time or chance to earn their rewards slash materials. This is why they do not have homes. I continued with my questions, what shall I do on earth to provide more materials for my home? The angels replied, there are seven things one must do to build up their materials to build their home. The first is their accumulation of worship and praise to God. The second is their time spent reading the Bible. Third, their time spent praying. Fourth, their time spent evangelizing to people. Fifth, one's offering to the Lord. Sixth, their obedient tithes to God. Lastly, their time spent serving the church in any way. These are the deeds or works of obedience in which one accumulates materials for their heavenly home. If one is lacking in these areas, they will have no materials to build their home. There were numerous people in heaven without homes. Many who did not have homes were actually pastors, deacons, deaconesses, elders, etc. I asked out of curiosity, where do the children live then? They angels replied, they live here. As I looked around, they were gathered throughout the Garden of Flowers. The Garden of Flowers was so beautiful and the fragrance was out of this world. The scene was beyond what I could describe with my words. The second place was for faithful adults. There is a difference between salvation and rewards. This place had so many homes. The homes were built with beautiful gems and rare stones. Some of the homes were as high as the highest skyscrapers on earth. Those people who had faithfully served the Lord while living on earth had their homes built with beautiful gems and rare stones. In this particular place, all the people looked around the age of 20 to 30 years old. There were no men or women in regards to gender. There are no sick, old, or lame people. Heavenly Golden City, New Jerusalem. City of Light in Heaven. Heavenly Skyscrapers. Big Mansion in Heaven. Streets underscore of underscore gold. I once knew an elder named, oh, I'm Myung. He had died at the age of 65 years old. He was a very short man, as tall as second graders in elementary school. He had suffered from a rare disease called rickets. However, when it came to the Bible, he was a Ph.D. He had written many commentaries. I met him in heaven, and there he was tall and handsome. He was no longer sick but healthy. Heaven is a very wonderful place. I am so full of expectations. Please believe what I am saying beloved people. The third place was for those who were shamefully saved. 1 Corinthians 3:15. This particular village was enormous in size, several times bigger than the second place, where the homes were made of gems and rare stones. 
I arrived at this place at great speed, riding a golden chariot. It was very far from the other beautiful places I saw in heaven. I asked the angels, I see great wilderness and fields. Why do I not see homes? The angel replied. What you are seeing are homes. I saw huge wide flat houses, which reminded me of a large chicken. Coop or some type of warehouse. These homes were not glorious, but shabby. This village and homes were for the souls who were shamefully saved. There were numerous large-sized shabby-looking homes. This village is several times bigger than the place where rewarded souls reside. Shabby houses in heaven. The angel said, Do you see the two large homes, one to your right and one to your left? I answered. Yes, I do see them. The angel said that he wanted to show me those two houses specifically. He said. The right home is for those who were pastors on the earth. The left home is for those who were elders. On the earth. As we arrived to the front of the two homes, I noticed they were humongous. My jaw. Dropped. When we opened the door and entered, my first impression was, chicken coop. Instead of. Thousands of chickens living in their coop, I saw souls. The angels advised me to observe very carefully. Because I would recognize some famous pastors from history. It was true. I recognized many pastors. From history. I specifically picked out one pastor and asked the angel, I know that Korean pastor. I know. How famous he was and the work he had done for the Lord. Why is he here? I do not understand. The angels answered, He never provided any building materials for his home. This is why he is living in a community home. I asked out of curiosity, How did this happen? Why did he not have any materials? The angel answered, While he was a pastor performing the functions as a pastor, he had loved to be complimented by the people. He had loved to be honored. He had loved to be served. There was no sacrifice and servitude on his part. This particular pastor was greatly honored in Korea and is an icon within the Korean Christian history. But he had no reward. You pastors out there, please listen. You have to lead people to more than just Sunday morning services. You must visit them in their homes. You must take care of the poor, the lame and old. The pastors who have served without sacrificing their lives and love to be honored have no reward in heaven. Matthew 23,5-12 After I had witnessed this scene in heaven and after I had come back to the earth, I immediately gave all of my possessions away including my five luxury vehicles. Our life is but a moment. In the Bible, the average life is about 70 to 80 years old. But it is only God who knows when a person will die. Anyone can die before the age of 70 or 80 years old. I had decided to give everything away, even my clothes. They people I saw had received salvation in shame. They were pastors, elders, deacons, and lay believers. There were multitudes of elders and deacons in this flat shabby home. But of course, it is much better than hell. However, why would anyone want to enter heaven in such a way? I will not end up in that shameful place. Their clothes were even shabby. What are the requirements for Christians to receive beautiful homes in heaven? First, we have to evangelize to as many people as possible. How should we evangelize? The angel told me, assume there is an unbeliever who does not know the Lord. The moment you decide to evangelize to that particular person, the building materials for your homes will be provided. As you unceasingly pray for their salvation, more building materials are provided. You must continue to check up on them, visiting them, and continue your evangelizing. This will add more materials to your home. If a person says he slash she cannot make it to church because they do not have nice clothes, then you must provide them with some 
If the person says he slash she does not have a Bible, you must provide one. If a person says he slash she does not have glasses to read, you must provide it for them. You must provide whatever you are able to so this person can be led to the Lord. Those who live in the best homes are those who had evangelized many times. The angel then escorted me to the place where the saints lived in nice homes. This is where saints who had evangelized much lived. It felt like downtown heaven. In Christian history, there are four people who have the biggest and most beautiful homes. The angel showed me the home of American evangelist D.L. Moody, British pastor John Wesley, an Italian evangelist, and Korean evangelist Pastor Choi, Gun Nung. These four people have the largest homes in heaven. These four had spent their whole lives evangelizing to people even through up to the time of their deaths. Within the Korean believers, there was a lay believer who had a large home. This lay believer had built many church buildings with all his possessions. He had given 3,000 bags of rice to the poor. He secretly helped thousands of pastors and leaders with their finance. He helped students studying theology or in Bible school with their tuitions. He had also taken in a pastor, 65 years old, into his home and took good care of him. His own church had kicked him out. I heard an angel shout, the materials are coming. I questioned the angel to my right about the materials and he told me, these materials are for a deaconess from a small church who is from the country. In fact, she receives materials every day. Even though she is poor, she comes to early morning service each day. She prays for 87 church members daily. When she finishes praying, she cleans up the church. I heard another angel shout, special delivery. The daughter of the deaconess has given what little money she had to her mother. However, the deaconess did not spend it on herself. She bought five eggs and two pairs of socks for the church pastor. Even though it may appear to be a small offering, she had given all she had for the day. This became special materials for her home in heaven. Second, those who also have a large home are those who have built church buildings or other buildings for kingdom purpose with their possessions and resources. In heaven, I also met an elder named Choi. Among all the Korean elders and deacons who are in heaven, he had the most beautiful home. His home was much higher than the tallest building in Korea. Choi had built many churches in Korea with his wealth. I asked the angel, how about my house? Is it in the process of being built? The angel said, yes it is. I begged to see my house. But they told me it was not allowed. I continued to beg and after some persistent begging, the angel said that the Lord will now allow it. We entered the chariot and traveled very far to another place. I was full of expectation. I asked, where is my house? The angel replied, it is over there. But it looked as though the place was only a foundation, only ready for development. I cried out, how could you do this to me? How could this be happening? How can my house be in a developing zone? Surviving the Korean War, I sold my only home to build a church. This church eventually grew to 5,000 members. I wrote many books inspired by the Holy Spirit. One book became a bestseller. With the proceeds from the books, I built Christian schools. The school birthed 240 pastors. During tenure as the dean, I had given out over 400 scholarships to over 400 poor children. I have built homes for the widows to live in. This all cost huge amounts of money. So how could this be? Why is my home in a land development? I am so upset. The angel replied sternly, You do not deserve to live in such a beautiful nice home in heaven because you have been honored by people countless times. Every time you had built or done something good, 
You were praised by people. You were even honored by the secular news. Therefore, all your works are in vain. Matthew 6 1 I looked at my home in the development zone. It was located in the middle of three other homes. It only had three stories. The house had many small rooms on the first two floors. I asked the angel, why do I have such small rooms? The angel answered, these rooms are for your sons and daughters. I only have four children, I replied. The angel responded, no, they are not for your earthy children. But for the ones you had evangelized and are saved. I loved it. I asked, where is my master? Bedroom. The angel said that it was on the roof. That bothered me. My room was not even finished. In an angry tone I said, it is so small. Why is it so difficult to finish? The angel replied, you are not even dead. We cannot finish your home or rooms because we do not know if more materials will be provided. Do you understand? When we entered my room, I saw two certificates hanging on my wall, so I went to read them. The first certificate described when I was 18 years old living in an orphanage. On Christmas Day, I was on my way back to the early morning church service. I had seen an elderly man shivering on the street. I took my jacket off and gave it to him. That deed had given me a reward in heaven. The second certificate described the same incident but it was for buying some bread with the little money I had for the elderly man. The amount is not the issue. The act must be accompanied by genuine faith. The dollar amount has no significance. Homeless and cold beggar. We left the place and headed back out. During the ride, one of the angels asked, Are you sad? I will tell you how to have a beautiful home built. The Lord said when you go back to the earth, you must go to tell the people about heaven and hell as you have witnessed. Second, the Lord desires you to build a place to gather elderly female pastors and evangelists who do not have places to go or live. If you truly faithfully do these things, you will have a beautiful home. You can watch the full testimony on YouTube, Pastor Park, Yongjiu, Heaven and Hell 1000 to 1. Heavenly Scene Gospel of Christ Vital Soul Winning Admonition of Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach Eternity, after your exit from Earth, are you sure of ending up in Heaven? Time is running out. Grab the great salvation offer of Lord Jesus Christ now. Tomorrow will be too late. Procrastination is dangerous. Many lost souls are perishing daily worldwide in eternal burning hell fire. Be an active soul winner for Lord Jesus Christ. Your eternal heavenly rewards are awaiting you in heaven. As active soul winners, we will get our glorious crowns at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14 10 12, 2 Corinthians 5 10, and live in our heavenly glorious mansions forever by God's grace. You must be actively committed to continuous soul winning for our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be apathetic to active soul winning and don't backslide. The vital reality you must always remember if you are left behind on imminent glorious rapture day is that after the imminent glorious rapture, the only way you can make heaven is through painful martyrdom. You will have to die for your faith in Lord Jesus Christ. Antichrist will torture and kill you if you refuse to worship him as God or accept his mark of the beast. RFID chip slash human barcode, 666, either in your right hand or forehead, Revelation 13 14-18. If you worship Antichrist and accept his mark, RFID chip slash human barcode, 666, either in your right hand or forehead, you will end up in the horrible lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 14 9-11. No more excuse for you. Your regular scoffing about imminent glorious rapture is futile. 
Avoid eternal burning hell fire. Heaven is your best choice. Make the right decision now. Don't be left behind on imminent glorious. Rapture day due to your rapture scoffing and lukewarm condition. Remember this vital fact always. Repent before it is too late. You have been warned. Eternity in heaven, why born again? John 3 colon 3 dash 16, 14 colon 6. To be allowed to pass through heaven's gate. You need to have all of your sins removed. The only cleanser strong enough to thoroughly remove sin. Stains is the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ voluntarily died on the cross of Calvary over. 2000 years ago to save humanity from eternal damnation in eternal burning hell fire. He rose up from death by resurrecting on the third day to prove that he is our eternal redeemer. Revelation 1 colon 17 dash 18. Lord Jesus Christ is alive in heaven and he is coming back on imminent glorious rapture day. Be ready. Always for the imminent glorious rapture because it is a biblical and prophetic event. 1 Corinthians 15. 51 to 52. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. To become born again, first, admit your sinful state. Next, ask Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your wrongdoings. Finally, make Lord Jesus Christ Lord of your life by surrendering your will to Him. Ask Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to forgive your sins. By dying on the cross, Lord Jesus Christ made it possible for each of us to be granted a full pardon from the punishment of eternal damnation in hell fire. The reason so few people accept this pardon is that they do not think they need a savior or they want to find their own way of salvation. When God looked at your soul, he saw a sinner. God judges your heart, your thoughts, your attitude and intentions. When you are saved and forgiven of your sins, God looks upon you and sees the blood of Lord Jesus Christ making you pure and clean. Accept the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ now. Tomorrow will be too late. Procrastination is dangerous. Many doomed souls are now suffering horribly in eternal burning hell fire due to procrastination. Don't join these doomed souls in eternal burning hell fire. Heaven is your best choice. You have been warned. After being born again, remain dedicated in your commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is an act of faith, John 3,3-16, 524. There are no signs to look for. Believe strongly that you are saved in Jesus' name. Don't doubt. Make sure you continue to grow in your devotion to Lord Jesus Christ. Don't backslide. Holy Spirit will empower you to remain steadfast in your devotion to Lord Jesus Christ. You must always resist temptation that can lead you to indulge in sinful acts. Read your Bible daily. Also, pray always and look for a reliable gospel-focused church where you can worship God regularly. Glorious rapture is our blessed hope and an imminent reality. Therefore, we must be ready always for rapture. Never give up. Is your name written in the heavenly book of life? Revelation 20 colon 11 dash 15, John 3 colon 3 dash 16, 14 colon 6. Sincerely, to have your name written in heavenly book of life, you must accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior now. You can't be neutral. You are either a true follower of Lord Jesus Christ or a doomed follower of Satan. You are deceiving yourself and hell-bound after death by claiming to be an unbeliever, freethinker, or a religious idolater. You will be left behind on imminent rapture day and suffer terribly during the seven years worldwide tribulation period after rapture. Accept the great salvation. Offer of Lord Jesus Christ now. Tomorrow will be too late. Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, no other ways, John 14 6. You have been warned. No more excuse for you if you die and end up in eternal burning hell fire. Your argument is futile. 
Repent now or perish for eternity in the eternal lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 21,8. Raptured saint or martyred saint. Follower of Lord Jesus Christ. Or Antichrist. Decide wisely. Eternal doom of all categories of unbelievers and unrepentant sinners in lake of fire and sulfur. All categories of unbelievers and unrepentant sinners are already captured by Satan and his wicked demons because they are satanic captives. Some unbelievers who are always ignoring the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ may be successful and prosperous physically, they may think they are not yet captured by Satan. However, spiritually, they are already captured by Satan and in great satanic bondage. They Reason why some unbelievers think they don't need the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ may be because they are successful and prosperous physically. However, the plain truth is that all categories of unbelievers can only escape from satanic bondage and eternal damnation in eternal burning hell fire if they quickly accept the great salvation offer of Lord Jesus Christ before their physical death. John 3:16, 14:6. Hebrews 9:27 As an unbeliever and unrepentant sinner, your name is not written in the heavenly book of life. Revelation 20:11-15, John 3:3-16, 14:6 That means you are hell-bound and eternally doomed after physical death. Therefore, to have your name written in heavenly book of life, you must accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior now. You can't be neutral. You are either a true follower of Lord Jesus Christ or a doomed follower of Satan. Indeed, you are deceiving yourself and hell-bound after physical death by claiming to be a freethinker. Agnostic, atheist, new Ager, mystic, occultist, Muslim, traditionalist, living perfect master, grand master, avatar, Swami, occultic guru, Buddhist, grail messenger, ikist, ekonkar, amork, rosicrucian, Sai Baba devotee, Hare Krishna devotee, Mormon, BA high faith believer, Scientologist, Sufist, Freemason, Illuminati member, traditional idolater, religious idolater, Satanist, witch, wizard, sorcerer, magician, medium, Psychic, enchanter, hypnotist, astrologer, fortune teller, astral traveler, homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, pedophile, etc. All these categories of unbelievers and unrepentant sinners are already captured by Satan and his wicked demons because they are satanic captives. They will be left behind on imminent glorious rapture day and are hell bound after physical death unless they accept the salvation offer of Lord Jesus Christ now. On great judgment day, these categories of unbelievers and unrepentant sinners who are already doomed souls in eternal burning hell fire will be cast into the lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 20,11-15, 21,8. Repent now. Tomorrow will be too late. Heaven and hell are real. Heaven is your best choice. Don't go to eternal burning hell fire. Lord Jesus. Christ is the only way to heaven, John 14, 6, no other ways. No more excuse for you. You have been warned. Eternity, are you heavenly or hell bound? But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Revelation 21,8 This biblical quotation will condemn you to eternal damnation after your physical death. Lord Jesus Christ will judge you on great judgment day. You can still escape this eternal doom in the lake of fire since you are still alive. Repent and accept Lord. Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior now. Today may be your last day before death. Avoid hell. Heaven is your best choice. Lord Jesus Christ loves you. No more excuse for you if you die as an atheist. 
agnostic, freethinker, or unbeliever. God is real. Lord Jesus Christ is real. Heaven and hell are real. You have been warned. Repent before it is too late. Judgment day is certain. Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, no other ways, John 14 6. Are you a cold or lukewarm believer, Revelation 3 14 22. Be hot for Lord Jesus Christ and ready always for imminent glorious rapture. What is the great white throne judgment of damnation? Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great, and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades, hell, gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades, hell, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 11 15 At the great white throne judgment of God, the soul slash spirit of condemned people in hell will merge with their immortal bodies. In their resurrected forms, they will be judged by God. Lord Jesus Christ will be the supreme judge on the great white throne judgment day because he will judge all rebellious people who refuse to accept his great salvation offer, John 5,24-29, Revelation 20,11-15. It will be a judgment of condemnation, no appeal or mercy again. The verdict will be, guilty. One can only repent while still alive. One can only accept the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ while still alive. The resurrected, condemned people will be cast into the eternal lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 20 11 15. Second, death means eternal separation from God in the horrible lake of fire and sulfur. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Revelation 21 8 Eternal doom of Satan and sinners slash unbelievers in the lake of fire. Satan, the deceiver, and his fallen angels slash demons will be thrown and confined totally into the lake of fire. And sulfur eventually by God. They will be tormented forever. That will be the end of Satan's evil activities on earth forever. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and sulfur, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 2010 You will be eternally separated from God in the lake of fire and sulfur. Your soul will never die but it will be eternally tormented in the horrible burning lake. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Revelation 21,8 On the great white throne judgment day, all categories of unbelievers and unrepentant sinners who are already doomed souls in eternal burning hell fire will be cast into the lake of fire and sulfur. Revelation 20 11 15, 21 8. Repent now. Tomorrow will be too late. Heaven and hell are real. Heaven is your best choice. Don't go to eternal burning hell fire. Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. John 14 6, No other ways. The great white throne judgment of damnation will happen after the millennial reign of Lord Jesus Christ and it will involve all unsaved people who while alive refused to accept the great salvation offer of Lord Jesus Christ, John 5,24-29, Revelation 20,11-15. Sadly, 
they will be cast into the eternal lake of fire. And sulfur, Revelation 20,11-15, 21,8. Therefore, all active soul winners must intensify their soul. Winning efforts in this grace period to win numerous lost souls for our Lord Jesus Christ. Our eternal rewards are awaiting us at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ. Through continuous soul winning, online and offline, the whole world will be evangelized for our Lord Jesus Christ before the imminent glorious rapture. By God's grace, Numerous souls will be saved and be prepared always for the imminent glorious rapture in Jesus' name. We will get our glorious crowns at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 12, 2 Corinthians 5 10, and live in our heavenly glorious mansions forever. By God's grace, Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to make heaven and escape from going to hell when you die, John 14 6 the lake of fire and sulfur will be a place of eternal torment. It will be very terrible for Satan, fallen angels slash demons and the lost souls in that eternal burning lake. Do not end up in it. The second death is eternal separation from God in the lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 21,8. Listen to what Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you now, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the one who lives. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hell. Revelation 1:17-18. God does not send someone to hell. You choose hell when you refuse to accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. When you refuse God's love gift of eternal life in Lord Jesus Christ, you willingly choose hell. Your soul will be tormented for eternity in hell fire when you die. When you say no to Lord Jesus Christ and His payment for your sins, you are saying that you are looking forward to dying and being cast into hell fire. You are telling God that you do not need Lord Jesus Christ. You will pay for your sins in hell fire. Hell is for eternity. If you die without accepting the salvation of Lord Jesus Christ, you will be tormented in hell. Fire forever. You will despair of ever having any deliverance. You will beg for death to come and take you away. However, you can only die once, Hebrews 9:27. Purgatory is a false doctrine. Reincarnation is a great satanic deception. Do not let Satan deceive you with false doctrines again. It will be a great disaster if you die without Lord Jesus Christ, Mark 8:36. Hell is a place of eternal torment. The smoke from their burning pain will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest, day or night. Revelation 14:11. God has a perfect place for you in heaven, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no person has imagined what God has prepared for those people that love him. 1 Corinthians 2 9, Avoid Hell Fire Lord Jesus Christ is your only way of making heaven after physical death on earth. John 14 6 It will not cost you anything to accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Accept Lord Jesus Christ while you are still alive. It will be too late if you die and end up in hell fire. Take the right decision now. The salvation that was given to us is very great. So surely we also will be punished if we live like this salvation is not important. Hebrews 2 colon 3 When underscore we underscore repent. If you have never received Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, ask Him to save you now. Confess all your sins and ask God to forgive you in Jesus' name. Do not put it off another second. This may be your last chance before you die. Take the chance now. The salvation of Lord Jesus Christ is very important. Remain steadfast. Heaven will be your eternal home in Jesus' name. It is very easy to accept. The salvation of Lord Jesus Christ. To accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, pray the 
Salvation prayer below and mean it with all your heart. Salvation steps in prayer. Are you still an unbeliever or unrepentant sinner? You must accept the great salvation of Lord Jesus Christ now. If you remain in your rebellion against Lord Jesus Christ, you will be left behind on imminent. Glorious Rapture Day by Lord Jesus Christ. Also, if you die without accepting the great salvation offer of Lord Jesus Christ, you will end up in eternal burning hell fire. How can you be saved? It is very simple. Take the steps below. Salvation. The following prayer, the sinner's prayer, also known as the prayer of salvation, is a simple prayer to follow when asking Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. You may certainly pray to God in your own words. The basis of the sinner's prayer comes from Romans 10 9 10. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Sinner's Prayer Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner, and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived, I need your forgiveness. I believe that Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins, and I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, Romans 10 9 that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess Jesus Christ as the Lord of my soul. With my heart, I believe that God raised Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. This very moment I accept Lord Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior and according to His Word, right now I am saved. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ for your unlimited grace which has saved me from my sins. I thank you Lord Jesus Christ that your grace never leads to license, but rather it always leads to repentance. Therefore Lord Jesus transform my life so that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. If you just said this prayer and you meant it with all your heart, we believe that there is a great possibility that you just got saved and are born again. You may ask, now that I am saved, what is next? First of all, you need to get into a Bible-based church, and study God's Word. Once you have found a church home, you will want to become water baptized. By accepting Christ you are baptized in the Spirit, but it is through water baptism that you show your obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Water Baptism is a symbol of your salvation from the dead. You were dead but now you live, for the Lord Jesus. Christ have redeemed you for a price. The price was his death on the cross. May God bless you. Jesus and a raptured saint. Still procrastinating? Take these easy steps to be saved, realize you are a sinner. There is no person without sin. None. Romans 3.10 All people have sinned and are not good enough for God's glory. Romans 3.23 Realize you cannot save yourself. We are all dirty with sin. Even our good works are not pure. They are like blood-stained rags. Isaiah 64 6 He saved us because of his mercy, love, not because of any good things we did. Titus 3 5 Realize that Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. Christ carried our sins in his body on the cross. He did this so that we would stop living for sin and live. For what is right? 1 Peter 2:24. Jesus is the one who loves us. And Jesus is the one who made us free. From our sins with his blood, death, dot. Revelation 1 colon 5. Simply by faith receive Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Some people did accept him. They believed in him. He gave something to those people who believed. 
he gave them the right to become children of God. John 1 12 Sirs, what? Must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and all these people from your house. Acts 16 30 31 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3:16. The End Time Are you zealous about soul winning? Urgently support global evangelism. Time is running out. Be ready perpetually for imminent glorious rapture. Are you ashamed of the Gospel of Lord Jesus Christ? Don't be ashamed of continuous soul winning for Lord Jesus Christ. Remain always heavenly minded. Soul Winning Commission of Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach According to 1 Corinthians 16:22, Maranatha means our Lord, come. Therefore, Maranatha Trumpeter is always blowing the warning trumpet to prepare people worldwide to be ready always for the imminent glorious rapture. In essence, Maranatha Trumpeter is a dedicated rapture. Watcher and committed soul winner for our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach is inspired by our Lord Jesus Christ to continuously win numerous souls online slash offline, encouraging the faith of other believers in Christ as well as continuously warning people worldwide to be ready always for the imminent glorious rapture and the millennial reign of global peace under King Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4 15 18 1 Corinthians 15 51 53, Titus 2 13, Revelation 20 4 6. It is a selfless service for our Lord Jesus Christ. The Prophetic Millennial Kingdom, Revelation 20 4 6, is the 1000 years worldwide peaceful reign of King Jesus Christ. On earth after the seven years worldwide tribulation period, Jeremiah 30 3 11, Daniel 9:27, Matthew 24:15, 21, Revelation 6:16. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 28:19 to 20, Maranatha. Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach always want to win numerous sinners urgently for our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's grace, many souls are one daily online and offline for our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Lord Jesus Christ desperately wants souls saved from dropping daily into hell. Maranatha. Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach always want to depopulate hell and populate heaven for our Lord. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is alive in heaven and he is coming back on imminent glorious rapture day. We must. Be ready always for the imminent glorious rapture because it is a biblical and prophetic event. 1. Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. Indeed, no one can know the day or hour of imminent glorious rapture. Matthew 24:36, Mark 13, 32 to 33, Luke 21, 34, 35. Therefore, rapture date setting is futile. Rapture date setters are deceiving themselves. Glorious rapture will occur suddenly and unexpectedly. It is true that glorious rapture is overdue but we must never give up. Lord Jesus Christ has delayed. Glorious rapture for over 2,000 years due to his great mercy to save numerous souls worldwide. We must never give up our glorious rapture blessed hope because it will happen suddenly and Unexpectedly whether rapture scoffers, lukewarm believers, and unbelievers believe it or not. The best option is to be ready always for imminent glorious rapture. Looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 Lord Jesus Christ is reliable. Pre-tribulation rapture is a reality in our blessed hope. Lord Jesus Christ gave us the pre-tribulation rapture divine assurance in the Holy Bible, because you have kept my command to persevere, I, 
Lord Jesus Christ, also will keep you from the hour of trial, seven years worldwide. Tribulation period, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3:10. Glorious rapture is a suspense-filled prophetic event, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. However, we must not worry or be too anxious. We must not be afraid of imminent glorious rapture or become rapture phobic. Our Lord Jesus Christ will not inform us whether we will be among the raptured saints or not. He expects us to be perpetually prepared and ready for imminent glorious rapture. He will reward us with the crown of righteousness if we remain as dedicated rapture watchers. Till he appears in the sky suddenly on imminent glorious rapture day, 2 Timothy 4,7-8. Therefore, we should have strong faith in Lord Jesus Christ and trust him to pilot us safely to heavenly New Jerusalem. On imminent glorious rapture day, the great mercy of Lord Jesus Christ will usher us into heavenly new Jerusalem on imminent glorious rapture day by his grace. The horrible agonies of the seven years worldwide tribulation period, Daniel 9:27, Revelation 6-16, under the one world government of Antichrist will be terrible for people left behind on imminent glorious rapture day. The satanic one world government described in Revelation 13, 1-18 will be under the total control of Antichrist and his new world order, NWO, evil forces. Antichrist will be fully supported by the false prophet. During the Great Tribulation period, left behind lukewarm Christians and converted unbelievers who are now very zealous for Lord Jesus Christ will be persecuted and martyred horribly. Millions of them will be tortured and beheaded due to their refusal to worship Antichrist as God and also accept his mark of the beast, RFID chip slash human barcode, 666 either in their right hands or foreheads, Revelation 13, 14-18. The Mark of the Beast, RFID chip slash human barcode, 666, will be enforced worldwide after the imminent glorious rapture and left behind people who become microchipped during the Great Tribulation period will be damned for eternity in the lake of fire and sulfur, Revelation 14, 9-11. 21,8. We must never give up our glorious rapture blessed hope. We will become raptured on imminent glorious rapture day by God's grace. The church age will come to a distinct end on imminent glorious rapture day and will be followed by the day of God's wrath, the unfulfilled worldwide tribulation period of seven years Daniel 9:27. Indeed. Rapture ready born again Christians the Bride of Christ, will not go through the seven years worldwide tribulation period because it is not for us due to the great mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and His reliable assurance in Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to endure, I, Lord Jesus Christ, will also keep you safe from the time of trouble, the worldwide tribulation period of seven years, which is coming upon the world to test all the people on earth. Revelation 3:10. Lord Jesus Christ will deliver us on imminent glorious rapture day from the wrath that is coming to the earth. 1 Thessalonians 1, 9-10. The bride of Christ is not appointed to wrath, seven years worldwide. Tribulation period, but to salvation or deliverance. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to Obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. Lord Jesus Christ alluded to our merciful escape from the coming day of wrath that shall try the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray. Always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. The seven years worldwide tribulation period is not for the Bride of Christ, rapture ready born again. Christians. Instead, it is for Israel to fulfill prophecy and for the Gentiles, unbelievers, to be punished if 
they refuse to repent and accept the great salvation of Lord Jesus Christ. To understand end times prophecy, we must distinguish between the church, Israel, and the Gentiles. The church is really made up of both believing Jews and converted Gentiles who have spiritually experienced the born. Again, John 3,3-16, Relationship with Lord Jesus Christ by Faith They have entered into the Kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ spiritually by faith, awaiting the day when they will enter His physical Kingdom by His glory and power at His glorious second coming to earth. They are not appointed to wrath, seven years. Worldwide Tribulation Period, which is really for unbelieving Jews and rebellious Gentiles, Daniel 9:27. Rapture scoffers are always mocking dedicated rapture watchers. However, dedicated rapture watchers don't give up your glorious rapture blessed hope. Glorious rapture is a reality. Raptured or left behind? Rapture day is imminent. Rapture event is not dependent on heavenly signs like blood, moons, comet appearance, meteorite invasion, eclipse of the sun or moon, etc. These heavenly signs are only warning us to wake up from spiritual slumber and be perpetually ready for imminent glorious rapture. Our redemption is drawing near. Very soon, the heavenly trumpet will sound and all our trials and challenges will cease on earth. It will be marvelous when we are ushered by Lord Jesus Christ into the heavenly new Jerusalem on the imminent glorious rapture day. We will not experience the doom and great ordeals of the seven years worldwide tribulation period, Daniel 9:27, Revelation 6-16. Many lost souls are perishing daily worldwide in eternal burning hell fire. We must remain as active soul. Winners for our Lord Jesus Christ. Our eternal heavenly rewards are awaiting us in heaven, Matthew. 10:40-42, as active soul winners we will get our glorious crowns at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 10-12, 2 Corinthians 5:10, and live in our heavenly glorious mansions forever by God's grace. As dedicated born-again Christians, we will remain committed to soul-winning, heavenly pursuit and perpetual rapture readiness. We can't know the day or hour, but we will remain ready always. By God's Grace, we will not give up dedicated evangelistic service for our Lord Jesus Christ and rapture blessed. Hope in Jesus' name. We are eternal citizens of heavenly New Jerusalem, Revelation 21-22, by God's grace. Whatever we do now to continuously populate the heavenly kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ will remain in our heavenly record for eternity. We must remain as active soul winners for our Lord Jesus Christ. Through continuous soul winning online and offline, the whole world will be evangelized for our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's grace, numerous souls will be saved. We will get our glorious crowns at the heavenly judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 12, 2 Corinthians 5 10, and live in our heavenly glorious mansions forever by God's grace. Whatever we do selflessly for gospel sake, Matthew 10 40-42, will always increase our eternal treasures and heavenly rewards in heaven. Lukewarm believers slash preachers and backslidden Christians must wake up from spiritual slumber and resist the satanic temptation to backslide from the narrow way to heaven before death or the imminent glorious rapture day. Heaven or hell decide wisely. May Lord Jesus Christ have great mercy and rapture all of us as well as wake up backsliders and the unprepared Christians. Amen. Apart from continuous online evangelism, Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach is also fully committed to continuous missionary work for the heavenly kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Major Aim of Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach is to massively propagate the gospel online slash offline and win numerous souls for our Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew 28 19-20. It is a divine calling 
to propagate the gospel continuously online slash offline and win numerous souls for our Lord Jesus Christ. The continuous aim is to awaken many souls online and offline to prepare for eternity heaven or hell. There are challenges that are hindering Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach from reaching numerous souls continuously. May God raise up compassionate people who will kindly support continuous missionary work in Jesus' name. Amen. May God raise up kind-hearted believers in Christ for His glory to kindly support Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach in order to continuously speed up active missionary work and global evangelism for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are willing for God's glory, your kind-hearted support for Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach will be appreciated in order to continuously speed up active missionary work and global evangelism for our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many places, many cities, and numerous villages that gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ need to reach urgently in this grace period. Time is running out. Prophetic glorious rapture is an imminent reality. Apathy or cold indifference for kind-hearted. Evangelical support is a wicked satanic manipulation to hinder massive continuous soul winning online and offline for our Lord Jesus Christ. Your kind-hearted support for Maranatha Trumpeter. Evangelical outreach is for God's glory and for the sake of the heavenly kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical outreach will always remain committed to active soul winning. For our Lord Jesus Christ. You too must be actively committed to continuous soul winning for our Lord. Jesus Christ. Never give up. You are an overcomer by God's grace. We must not be ashamed of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew 10 32 39, Romans 1 colon 16 17, Colossians 1 24, 2 Timothy 1 colon 8. Remember what Lord Jesus Christ said about those who are ashamed of him. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Luke 9 26 We must always be heavenly minded and ready always for the imminent glorious rapture. We can't know the day or hour but we must be ready perpetually. Warning signs are occurring regularly. Worldwide. Lord Jesus Christ is also warning us regularly through numerous prophetic messages to be ready always. Never give up. Maranatha Trumpeter Evangelical Outreach will continuously preach biblical truth, win numerous souls always for our Lord Jesus Christ online and offline, motivate people to remain always heavenly minded as well as continuously warning people worldwide and preparing them to be ready always for the imminent glorious rapture. Glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. This material world is not our eternal home. We will leave behind on earth all our earthly acquisitions. After physical death or on imminent glorious rapture day. We are pilgrims just passing through. Heavenly New Jerusalem, Revelation 21-22, is our eternal glorious home. Whatever we do now to Continuously populate the heavenly kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ will remain in our heavenly record. For eternity. Remain blessed. Your brother in Christ.